ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله تركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك ولا ينتظم في سلكها الا سالك اللهم صل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وقره عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الاولين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الاخرين اللهم صل وسلم وانعم واكرم وبارك عليه في الملا الاعلى الى يوم الدين يقول عز من قائل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اللهم اجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين in the name of allah the gracious the merciful to him we belong and to him we shall return we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite grace and his boundless mercy to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon our beloved messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to embed within our hearts the love of Al-Habib Al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask him, we ask Allah jalla fi ula to make us of those who love to follow in the footsteps of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who imbue the mercy that our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to this earth with. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring relief to many and all of our brothers and sisters across the world who are facing difficulties and hardships of tyranny and oppression and abuse. Ya Allah, we ask you to bring them relief and refuge and ease in these days. Ya Akram Akrameen. Brothers and sisters, one of the distinct features of life that all of us negotiate on a day-to-day -day basis is the question of risk, is the question of sustenance. All of us, every single day, are navigating this issue of wealth and money and family and belongings, homes, food, drink, etc. And no doubt, no doubt, that this feature of the dunya is extremely consuming. It is extremely, at times, overwhelming, and it concerns us and worries us. And certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator and our sustainer, He has said to us, المال والبنون فتنة that the realities of this dunya of money and wealth and belongings and family they are fitna they are a difficulty they are a trial they are a, a test and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator has told us about this feature of the dunya but as you all know we have been journeying on this path trying to immerse ourselves in an understanding of al-deen al-islami, this religion of Allah jalla fi ula, that will not only make us and grant us confidence, but that will compel us and propel us to live more meaningfully and to live with greater viability in this dunya. We don't just want to exist as Muslims, but we want to thrive as believers. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His grace and His mercy and His rahmah is that He teaches us how to make sense of these seemingly very difficult features of the dunya, such as wealth and money and belongings. And that's what I want us to think about today. How can we situate ourselves in a distinct type of worldview around this question where we feel, where we feel not only a sense of understanding, but we feel a sense of confidence and a sense of vibrance that we want to thrive and proceed forward, that we're no longer compelled into this space of, of anxiety or worry or fear or sleeplessness, etc. And the starting point is that we have to learn something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because as I've, 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 as I've articulated that a trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a love of Allah is grounded in knowledge of Allah. And one of the most manifest qualities and descriptions and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he is ar-razzaq 
إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين. Verily Allah subhanahu wa taala, He is the one who absolutely always gives and sustains. He is الرزاق. He doesn't give us periodically. He doesn't give us at some points and deprive us. No, Allah always is giving. He is الرزاق ذو القوة المتين, and He is the one who has manifest power. And so when you're thinking about your questions of sustenance and wealth and, and material belongings, you have to situate it and ground it in a space where you know with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mu'ti. He is the one who gives. He is the one who sustains us. That every breath, every morsel of food, every piece of, every drop of water, every cent in our bank account, all of it is through and by Allah jalla fi ullah. And what he informs us about this question of risk is that this is something that is certain for you. That this is not something you have to doubt. This is not something you should be anxious about or worried about whether you're going to have it or not. No, when it comes to sustenance, when it comes to risk, Allah says, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوَعَدُونَ That verily what is owed to you and everything that you need to sustain you has already been parsed out. It's already been affirmed for you. So don't worry about it. But because we are doubtful beings, because we are simple, weak, fickle beings, and we don't trust it even when Allah says it, Allah doubles down. Because He knows He's speaking to a munkir, someone who is, who is doubtful. So He does a form of tawqeed, affirmation, by swearing, he says, فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٍّ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْطِقُونَ Allah is speaking to us because He knows our fickle nature. So He says, I swear, فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ By the Lord of the heavens and the earth, what I'm telling you is truth. Just as you speak, just as you utter words. So Allah is he is striving in the Qur'an to engender within us confidence and certainty that we have a, as believers, we have a theocentricity. We believe in Allah and we revolve around Allah's magnificence and His omnipotence and everything is around Him and through Him and by Him. So never ever doubt this reality. Never ever doubt it. The Prophet ﷺ says, لَوْ تَوَكَّلْتُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُلِهِ لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ That if you relied upon Allah and you trusted in Him, the way that He is deserving of trust, the way that He is deserving, because very often we will put our trust in a friend or a family member or a boss or a company or a stock. You know, I put my trust in this stock because it is, has high viability and it's a low risk and, and we put our trust into man-made instruments. But when it comes to Allah al-Razzaq, ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ الْمُعْطِي Our trust is fickle. Our trust is sparse. So the Prophet is saying, if you trusted in Him, as He is deserving of that trust, because no one is deserving of that trust other than Allah, then He will give you the way that He gives the bird. That the bird goes out with an empty belly and comes back in the dusk with a full belly. That if we really understood this, if we understood who Allah is and what He has in store for us, and there's no doubt, no doubt by Allah, by Him, in this question, then we will find ease, comfort, in our day to day, we will never stress about how much money is in our bank account or how we're going to pay the bills. Those will not be stressors in our lives because we believe in Him, Allah Jalla fi Ula. The Prophet ﷺ came into the masjid of Medina once and he saw one of the companions, Abu Umama, sitting. And he said to him, Mali araka jalisan fil masjid fi waqtin ghayr salah. Why do I find you sitting in the masjid in a time other than salah? So Abu Umama said, Ya Rasulullah, humumun lazimatni. 
وَدَيْنٌ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I have these humum, I have these, these worries, these anxieties, these, these things that, that concern me. That they just won't let me go, you know. A lot of us, that's how we feel with our problems. Like our problems are riding us. They won't let us go. Humumun lazimatni. Wadainun ya Rasulullah. And I have this dain. So the Prophet said, I have this debt. I have this debt, ya Rasulullah. I feel like I'm drowning in it. So he says, Ala u'allimuka kalaman. Ida anta qultahu. Adhab Allahu hammak. Waqada anka dainak. Should I not teach you words? And I want you to open up your heart and your minds, brothers and sisters, to the guidance of the Prophet wasallam. The Prophet is not some mere man. He's not a simple man who, who just came and went and had some wisdoms. No, he is rahmatullahi lil'alameen. He is the mercy of Allah to this world. You have to embed yourself. He is, he is part and parcel of your belief system of your theology you can't be a Muslim without saying Muhammadun Rasulullah because he is the pathway and the means to Allah Jalla fi ula. so listen to the guidance listen to the the profundity let me should I not teach you words O Abu Umama that if you were to say them that Allah will relieve you of your humum of your worries and your concerns and he will take care of your dain he'll take care of your debts he said, of course, Ya Rasulullah, please. He says, قُلْ إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ اللهم إني, اللهم إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْهَمِّ وَالْحَزَنِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْعَجْزِ وَالْكَسَلِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْجُبْنِ وَالْبُخْلِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ غَلَبَةِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ الرِّجَالِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is teaching now the companions how he wants them to be oriented every single day of their lives. In the morning and the evening, you wake up and you have to utter these words, Wallahi, not on your tongue, not simply by listening to them on an audio, but feeling it in your heart, Ya Rabbi, I seek refuge in you. I want to envelop myself in your refuge. I want to throw myself in your refuge, Ya Allah. I seek refuge in you. From hem, from worry, from sadness. Because these things, Ya Allah, they're suffocating me. I, I have too much worry in my heart. I have a type of worry in me and a sadness in me that's not indicative of someone who really knows who you are, Ya Rabbi. So I need you to put me in your refuge. I want to feel your warmth. I want to feel the comfort of your rahmah and your love, your wood. Because I know you love unconditionally. That's how the Prophet ﷺ wants you to speak to Allah every single day. أعوذ بك من الهم والحزن وأعوذ بك من العجز والكسل. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from from disability in any form, physical and otherwise. Ya Allah, I seek refuge in you from not being able. I desire your ability, your warmth, and your your lutf with me to be able. So many of us, we don't feel able sometimes in our bodies. We don't feel able in our psyches because we're just so overwhelmed. We just feel like we can't. I'm just numb. That's a feeling that all of us have very often. We feel numb. We, we just give up. We feel overwhelmed. So our ability is hindered. So you wake up and you say, Ya Rabbi, I seek refuge in you from any form of disability. And I seek refuge in you, Ya Allah, from laziness. Because very often, brothers and sisters, our biggest pain point and our biggest restriction and what limits us the most, very often, is laziness. Is just not wanting to get up. That I am able and that I am capable and that I am healthy and I have the resources and I have the know-how. But I just, I just don't feel like doing it because I want to indulge myself. I'm a little bit lazy. I don't want to wake up on time. I can wake up for Fajr, but my laziness doesn't allow me to do so. So we seek refuge in Allah from that diseased heart, that nafsani orientation. 
and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in al-hamm wal-hazan wal-azz wal-kasal wal-jubn wal-bukhl ya Allah I seek refuge in you from ever being a coward from ever being scared because very often and most often brothers and sisters many of our anxieties our worries our concerns are coming from a place of fear from a place of cowardice and weakness that i may not have my job next week that i may not be given this or that i may lose a child that i may have some loss of health i, I may have i may go to the doctor and they may say something i don't like so we we live in this space of phobia of terror of worry of anxiety of fear i seek refuge in allah from that type of cowardice and and, and fear i don't want to live in that state because a believer who knows allah and this is what we all strive for those states are limited in how they come about we want to shift the paradigm because i promise you brothers and sisters we don't need to live in a state of fear when we have allah when we know allah when we are certain about what he has in store for us and i seek refuge in you ya allah from being miserly from al bukhl because what is miserliness other than fear i don't want to give because i fear loss so i seek refuge in you from that ya allah and i seek refuge in you from ghalabat al dain wa qahr al rijal from the overwhelming nature of debt and how debt suffocates and debt overwhelms so many of us we feel that because of student loans or or home loans or car loans or something and some loans that we've taken we feel like it's choking us we feel like we can't sleep because of these debts and we want them to be taken care of and we need the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-razzaq to relieve us so the prophet is saying make these ad'iyah every morning and every evening and we seek refuge in you ya Allah from the evil of man from the potential of people to overwhelm us to be tyrannical with us to harm us to dispossess us because that is the nature there are human beings muslims and non-muslims who are oppressive who are wrong doers who harm others who bully others we seek refuge in you ya allah from those types of people there are there are governments that will will thrust entire peoples into concentration camps and abuse and tyranny and murder and killing and oppression and pillaging and rape this is qahr rijal we seek refuge in you ya allah because we know that you are dhul quwwat al matin so we seek refuge in your power and your might you are al aziz al mutakabbir al jabbar so we seek refuge in you brothers and sisters these words that i just expressed these are words that have to be felt experienced and said every morning and every evening we have to start to treat our divine discourse and our communication with allah and our remembrance of him as an essential part of our diet that i cannot live any longer ya allah without you being in my heart that i'm not speaking about you and your messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam brothers and sisters i want to tell you with an open heart that so many of us we have cut ourselves short because we say this to ourselves we say you know what sheikh i've tried those things and they haven't worked and i want to challenge myself and all of you to say have i really tried i may say you know what i try to to build my biceps i went to the gym 5 6 10 20 times but you know what i didn't see that much so i just gave up because it's not working all of us will say you're just not doing it right you're not trying enough you have to be consistent you have to have a trainer you have to go long term you have to do it daily you have to shift your lifestyle isn't that what we say to each other brothers and sisters there's no difference when it comes to allah that when allah and his messenger speak this way it's not hyperbole it's not exaggeration no ma'allahi wa billahi and by the barakah of al-habib al-mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam these realities can be in our lives we just have to we have to know this and we have to go about it in the right way we have to be consistent we have to have regimens we have to change our lifestyles i have to make dhikr every morning and i just don't rush with my tongue while i'm in transit i stop and i pause and i give myself proper 10 15 20 minutes 
and I make the azkar al mawrutha min al habib al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most beautiful of inheritance that has come to us is this remembrance, these words, these meanings. Wallahi al-Azim, brothers and sisters, there's nothing of value on earth. There is no position of power. There is no type of wealth. There is no type of ability that is more profound, more valuable, more meaningful, more nourishing, more uplifting than having the best of meanings and ideas and words that you can utter. Ma'allahi wa billah. Because that's where it all lives. What is the dunya? The dunya is nothing. The dunya is simple. The dunya is transient. The dunya is fickle. The dunya even in the space of solar systems is so small. This earth that we live in. So put your trust in your heart in Allah. لَوْ تَوَكَّلْتُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ If you just trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is deserving of trust, the Prophet sallallahu says. May Allah help us to trust in Him. And to never doubt in Allah. To never have any thoughts other than the most beautiful and profound thoughts about Allah. To elevate Allah in our hearts and our minds every single day. To be certain that He is with us. To be certain that He gives us. To be certain that He is merciful and kind and tender with us. Ya Allah help us to internalize these meanings. But with that, with this situation, with situating ourselves in a space around Allah, knowing with certainty that He is ar razaq having no doubts that He will give us, what is then our duty towards Allah? Because yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in a way that we have these qulub, we have these hearts, we have these souls, but we also have these bodies. And Allah does have an expectation around what we do with these bodies. And the firm expectation of Allah towards his believers is that with your abilities, with your bodies, you have to get up and you have to move. You have to engage in a form of sa'i, bayna safa wal marwa. That is what Allah expects of us. That's what he expected of a Sayyid Hajar. When she had to go and move back and forth between As-Safa wal Marwa, seeking Zamzam, seeking not Zamzam, but seeking anything for her child who was going thirsty and going to die. Allah expected her to get up and move. And that's what He expects of every single one of us. As Sayyidah Hajar's trust, her theology, her Iman, her certainty was that Allah will give. When she told her husband, Go. Allah will never lead us astray. Allah will never. Allah will never let us be at a loss. So go. And she moved and she tried and she strove and she went here and there. And ultimately, where did Samzam break? Next to the Kaaba, away from where she was running. And so Allah does have an expectation is that yes, on the one end, He wants your certainty, your qalb, to be grounded in the firmness of a razaq. But he wants you to move. He wants you to utilize all the means that he's given us. Al-akhdu bil-azbab. I'aqal wa tawakkal. That's why when Sayyidina Umar walked into the masjid and he saw these people sitting, and these people were sitting there, and the Umar said to them, What are you doing here? He said, Natlubur risk. Nahnul mutawakkiluna ala Allah. We are seeking sustenance. We are those who rely upon Allah. <laughs> he, you know, he, he pulled a Sayyidina Umar on them. He said, get up and go. This is not tawakkul, this is tawakkul. This is a false type of reliance. Allah does not want of you to just sit there. Allah wants you to move. That's why as-sa'yu lil-rizqi ibadah. That to, to pursue and to strive and to seek rizq is a form of worship. وَمَنْ مَاتَ دُونَ ذَلِكَ فَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ And those who die in a state of seeking rizq, then they are a martyr. فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ and so certainly, brothers and sisters, never think for a moment that there is a contradiction between your trust in Allah, but your obligation by and through Allah to strive and to seek. But to strive and to seek in a manner that is meaningful, in a manner that is pleasing to Allah, in a manner that is sensible. Because, brothers and sisters, very often, especially given the nature of the world that we live in today, the industrialized, globalized world that we live in. So much of our social and individual meaning is grounded in a concept of what? 
what my career is, how much money I have, how much power I've been able to garner, how much, how much celebrity I've been able to, 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 to possess. This type of orientation in the world where our individual lives are so governed by our day-to-day -day pursuit of money is something that requires taking a step back. I am not advocating that we become disengaged and disillusioned by the dunya and just neglect, neglect it and throw it away and just become monks. No, that is not the way of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, it is meaningful for certain people at times to retreat, to enter into a space of khalwa periodically or otherwise. But that's a different reality. I'm talking about the general disposition of mu'mineen today has to be one where you are upright and you are striving. But your striving must be meaningful. You cannot go to work every day in the morning to evening and the only thing you're obsessed about is getting your project done, meeting your deadlines, fulfilling your deliverables, making sure that you're positioning yourself for the next, for the next type of upliftment or promotion or that you're going to get yourself into a different bracket where you're going to get these many stocks and, and your whole obsession, day and night, what, you, what you're anxious about, what you're worried about, what you're biting your nails about is this type of quote-unquote upward mobility. That cannot be a reality that is in your qalb. Your qalb is ma'allahi wa billah. And your jawarih, your limbs, ta'amalu fi dunya. Yes. Our bodies should be engaging the dunya meaningfully. Strive and struggle in the dunya. Try to be ambitious and grow. Try to be promoted in the dunya. But do that with your limbs, not with your heart. Not hoping and trusting and being anxiety ridden that am I going to get this promotion? Am I going to be fired? Are they going to lay me off? You don't worry about those things because you believe in ar-razaq. But be sensible, be responsible. Go to work on time. Go to work early if you have to. Be ambitious. Strive. But also do that in a way that is representative of someone who knows the balance that Allah expects of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that there, there are huquq. وَآتِي كُلِّ ذِي حَقٍ حَقَّ There are rights. There's a right that you have to your body. Your family has a right that, that is due to them. You have to fulfill it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right in, in distinct times of ibadat that he expects. Of course, it is all for Allah. But there are ritual ibadat. The five prayers. There is no job that I should be so committed to that would compromise my prayers. Unless you have a very unique and distinct situation that is impossible to exit and you need a fiqhi dispensation. But never should it be the case that yes, I will pursue my risk unapologetically while sacrificing my prayers, sacrificing my remembrance. That all I think about is making sure that I get to the, the, the corporate party or the, the, the gathering or the, the field or the, the opportunity to be close to the, to, to the CEO or whoever because that's how I'm going to get my promotion. You don't get your promotion other than through Allah. You utilize the worldly means as Allah has placed them out through the halal only, not the haram. Never think that for a moment that your rizq is tied into haram behavior. Never can that be the case. Your rizq is not tied into haram. If there is anything that is required of you that is haram, that is not where your rizq lies. Because many of us, that is the deception of the shaitan. We think that for me to get a certain amount of money, I have to do this haram. I have to cheat. I have to lie. I have to steal. I have to go to places and be with people that is haram. Because if I don't, then I will be sacrificed. No. I will tell you right now, no. And I'm not talking about this as someone who I have worked in corporate America, bifadlillah. I worked in finance for many years. I know that world and I know it very well. You don't have to be deceived by these social ideas that come about in a way that suffocate us and make us feel that if I don't do this, I'm going to be compromised. Not when you have Allah with you. And by the way, just to let you know, don't think for a moment... You know, that, you know that pursuit that we may engage in that is haram? 
You know, I may cheat, I may steal, I may lie, I may go, I may forge, I may do whatever I get because I know that there's some money there for me. You know that work that you did to get the haram money? Do you know that that money was going to come to you regardless? That money, the one that you decided to take through haram, was going to come to you regardless. But if you just worked and tried through the halal, if you were able to get 2,000 or 2 million through that haram route, I promise you by Allah that that 2 million would have come to you through the halal route if you just walk the halal path. I'm not saying you just sit there and do nothing. No, you strive. Ta'khudh bil asbab. Be ambitious. Do those things within meaning. Take nasiha. Take guidance. Ask your shaykh. Ask your peers. Ask your father. Ask your elders. Ask people in the industries. Figure out what's sensible, what's meaningful. But never compromise your faith for a dollar. Because every penny is meant to you. Ma nabata min haram fannaru awla min. Prophet says that which was grown through haram. Anything that was grown in haram, because if, if one part of my body came from haram money, then that part of my body, hellfire, has more of a right to it than anything else. May Allah protect us. So brothers and sisters, your knowledge of al-razzaq, your knowledge of Allah, our knowledge of Allah should be one that never allows us to become anxious or worried about where our money is going to come from where our food's going to come from, how our rent is going to be paid, how our bills are going to... Never does the heart of the believer. And I'm not saying that if you have this, then you're somehow a bad Muslim. No, but we have all growth to do because that's what Allah has in store for us. But simultaneously, there is an expect, expect, expectation from Allah to strive and to struggle and to work. That is there. And brothers and sisters, I also want us to indicate something here. That very often people... They are discontent with their jobs. So many of us, especially the newer generations, the millennials and Generation X and others, are just discontent with their work. They don't like their job. If I were to ask and I were to say, how many of you don't like your job? I'm sure 99% are going to throw their hands up. This phenomena is something that we have to take back to think about for a moment. Because it's not natural. It's not normal. There is a certain type of reality playing out that has made so many of us discontent with the risk that Allah has, has in store for us. مَنْ فَتَحَ مَنْ فُتِحَ لَهُ بَابُ رِزْقٍ فَلْيَلْزَمْ The Prophet ﷺ says, if a door of rizq has been opened for you, stay with it. Because Allah opened that door for you. I never wanted to be in finance. My mother, my father, they didn't let me go into the career that I wanted to. I never wanted to be an engineer. I never wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be that. I wanted to be this. Khir, try it out, you know. In your free time, try to, to, to develop a hobby that, that fulfills that need that's inside of you. But beware of the whispers of the shaitan that tell you to be discontent. No, a rida al ghina ghina nafs true wealth true needlessness is when your heart is fulfilled when you feel and you're able to say not with just with your tongue but with your heart alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah this by the way was much easier easier for my father's generation people who grew up post world war 2 and the baby boomers because for them any door of risk was alhamdulillah correct any door of risk that was opened, any career path, alhamdulillah, we're able to have some sustenance, able to open up a home, able to get married, feed our children, alhamdulillah. But now, post that reality, when there's so much more comfort and relaxation, and people grew up in a certain type of quote-unquote middle-class reality, not that all of us grew up in a middle-class reality, but that phenomenon, that's where you have this whole question of, I just, I'm, I'm disillusioned and I don't want this. No, if Allah has opened up a door of risk for you, stick with it because there is khair in it. Allah has opened up a lot of beneficial things for you and He has made you sustainable and capable by this door, so stay with it. And then if you want to meaningfully explore something else, do it without being irresponsible. Don't, don't just throw it all into the wind and say, you know what, I need to find myself. No, find yourself while you're working. Okay? Find yourself while you're working. 
Don't find yourself by putting your wife and your children in a compromised state. Don't, comp don't, don't, don't find yourself for years just exploring kind of in the ether. That's not what Allah wants of us. Allah expects us to be Right, that's a, that's, a, that's a Quranic principle that the nahar, the daytime is meant to be worked in and lived in. Do and Allah will see your, what you do. So I hope and pray brothers and sisters that we're able to internalize these meanings. That we're able to develop a far, far greater trust in Him. Jalla fi ula. That we're able to utilize the means that Allah has given us meaningfully. To strive in a manner that is halalun tayyib. To be people who are ambitious. Yes, I expect and I desire and I hope that as Muslims we thrive, that we are the CEO of cor corporations, that we have our own startups, that we become extremely financially viable. This is part and parcel of a prophetic mission. There's no, there's no problem in being wealthy, wealthy and viable. All of the companions, many of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were wealthy individuals. But the reason why they pursued that money and how they used that money is a whole other question. Because they truly, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an would say that I would hope to die in the marketplace, sa'yan in this space, subhanallah, having my, my camels present with the bida'ah on top of it. Because that is a form of ibadah, that's good ibadah. But make sure your intention, don't give, don't sell yourself this idea, Ya Allah just give me a lot of money because once you give me a lot of money, I'm going to give a lot. <laughs> Be careful of that stuff. You know what, you have money now, give it. Try it out now. Right now, we all have money in our pockets. Give it. See what happens. No, no, I just need a little bit more. Why? Why need a little bit more? Where do you think the $10 you have in your pocket came from? You think that when you get a million dollars, it's going to make any difference? Wallahi, they're the same exact thing. By Allah and through Allah. So pursue meaningfully. Strive. We, if, 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 if American Muslims want to offer something to the world that we live in today, to the American landscape, then bring to your job, bring to your corporation, bring to your, your, your whatever industry you're in, bring to it meaning. Explore with your co-workers what it means to live a valuable life situated in tawakkul ala Allah. That you live for the sake of pleasing Allah. The reason that you woke up early in the morning and you made your afkar in the masjid and you prayed fajr and you went out to work is because you desire to seek Allah's pleasure. The reason why you paused in the middle of the day and you took 20, 30 minutes to sit there and remember Allah, to read Quran, to pray, is because you want real value to be embedded in your actions. You want this for yourself and your akhirah and for your family, your children, but we want this added value for society. Yes, it is a very powerful economic engine, but don't think anything is more powerful than Allah. Engage it, be vibrant in it, but inject your values into it. Let people see what a, what a believer brings to the table. Does, don't just be molded by the, 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 the current, no matter how strong it is. A believer is someone who's able to be firm and steadfast and change the trajectory. Think about the life of the Prophet ﷺ and how he shifted the tr entire trajectory of the Arabian Peninsula by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he stood firm ma'allahi wa billah. And he shifted the direction. As a community who live in 2018, we have that ability. May Allah help us to realize it. May Allah help us to be accomplished, vibrant Muslimin who are successful in every possible way, whose hearts and minds are grounded in a deep belief in Allah, unwavering belief in Allah and trust in Him. And make us not lazy people, but accomplished people who struggle and try. Don't just be content with whatever paycheck you have in the sense of, I don't do any work for this and I get it and I'm fine. No, work based on your ability. Work based on your ability. Because the Ummah needs you. It needs your resources and your, your capabilities. May Allah bless us to understand this. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'd. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> subhanallah, in the past two days, every time you open up the news, there's a different khabar, a different news, piece of news that <coughs> that's telling us about someone who was shot and killed yesterday in California, between last night and today in a school, 
there was an, there was an active shooter, and in Mogadishu in Somalia there was tr there was a tr treacherous bombing and shooting right in the capital. Brothers and sisters, when you see these realities that play out, when you see the death of innocent people, regardless of where they are and who they are, I want us to always remember Allah subhanahu wa taala al latif. And you raise your hands immediately when you say, you say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Latif, Ultuf Bina. Ya Latif, Ultuf Bina. Be gentle and subtle and kind with us, Ya Allah. Because these things, they pain our hearts. When you see what's happening to our brothers and sisters in China, the Uyghur Muslims in China, who we must never forget, who what is happening to them every single day is one of the worst forms of human abuse. This, 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 these concentration camps, what is happening to our brothers and sisters in Burma, the least cared about people in the world, what is happening in Yemen, we cannot forget. We must call and implore Allah, Al Latif, to have lutf with us, have lutf with His creation. And we have to do our part. We have to advocate. We have to speak. We have to call our representatives. We have to give where we can give. Don't be complacent or apathetic ever, brothers and sisters. Be in a state of sa'i, be in motion, do your part and rely on, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah help us to do our part and always rely upon Him. In Allah, ya amuru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha'an al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon wa la dhikru Allahi akbar wa Allahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon.